Hey guys, welcome to Man Talk. My name is Vince Miller, your founder and host. So good to be with you this week again. Uh, we're just journeying through our book, 30 Virtues That Build a Man. You got to get a copy of this. You got to give it to your pastor, your friend, your brother, your son, whoever you want to give it to. Tell them just to dig in. They can use it as, as a devotional book just on their own, or they can get together with another guy like I am today with Tyler Van Epps. Thanks for being with us, man. Good to be here. It's awesome. So uh, we're actually in the next lesson. This is Core Beliefs. A man leads from what he believes, right? Uh, I love this one. This is so I bet good. you do. This is kind of like one of those topics that I would assume that you're pretty proficient on. You know, I don't, I don't I, think. I don't know if I go that far. Oh, come on, man! <laughs> <laughs> I just like it a lot. You just like thinking about the things that we believe, right? Yeah. Like, there, it's it's amazing how many like bad, corrupt beliefs we really have. Isn't it? Yeah. I think we have bad, corrupt, we have corrupt beliefs when it involves money, life, marriage, family, work, whatever it is. We probably got a corrupt belief buried in there so deep that we probably don't, not even aware that we have it right now. Yeah, likely. Uh, you probably do. Yeah, your wife probably knows what that belief <laughs> is, right? <laughs> She's probably told me. Uh, yeah, she probably has told you. You've just pushed it off and nah, said, hey, forget about no it. I, I don't really believe that. That one? Yeah. <laughs> please. Okay, so what is one bad belief you think your wife thinks that you have? Uh, one bad belief. She believes I'm OCD. Really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Borderline, borderline. Borderline. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm not scared right now. <laughs> You're a little like, obsessive compulsive, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Why? What do you do that's obsessive compulsive? Um, <laughs> you got to do something that's obsessive. Come it's on. It's going to be crazy. The okay. uh, the dishes. I'm, you you I, do the dishes? I do... I do a majority of the dishes. I don't do the dishes. Oh. I do a majority of the dishes. And so. you're obsessive compulsive about getting yep. the dishes done. The the behavior is I always have to have them cleaned within like five to ten minutes after our meal. I, I, <laughs> I can't let them sit there for much longer than that. Unless we have like guests over or something okay, or hanging right, right. out. But that starts to just gnaw in the back of my head. As soon as we get done, I'm taking you upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I have to have this, the silverware all has to be categorized. You can't just throw it all in there. It's got to be all the forks and pieces. So when you put it in the, the dishwasher. Because I'm the one who usually puts it away too, and I just want to. Obsessive compulsive, yeah. sweet. So, is your car perfectly clean right now? <laughs> it, is oh. right, it is right now as of yesterday. Oh, I as of yesterday. I can't even remember the last time I cleaned it before that. Though, oh, okay. So but it's different. nice today. Okay, right. Like like when I go into your closet, is everything hung up perfectly too? Are you that kind of that Pretty guy? much, yeah. All the shirts hung in the same direction? They're not color coordinated right now, okay. which is the... <laughs> but they're all hung, hanging in the same direction, meaning yes. that the, oh, yeah. the buttons are all pointing yeah. one direction, yeah. all using the same Left hangers? Right. Uh, uh, mine, mine are always pointing left. Okay, mine too. Yeah, are you pointing left, and then <laughs> you use the same hanger. Usually, yeah. Yeah, there's only one yeah. hanger in your Unless closet. My wife steals it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so you're borderline, yeah. <laughs> Maybe borderline. Shoot. But you know, no, you're not that bad. Yeah. It's just called being neat. Come on, That's man. Right. We can be yeah. neat too, or guys, we don't have to be slobs. That's right. We can like have things organized. I mean, so so. Okay, so we do have some beliefs that, that drive us and your wife sees that in you. My wife probably sees some things in me as well, like that I maybe be obsessive compulsive about, but we all have, we have these bad beliefs too. Like I, I can tell you like from a very young age, we're getting beliefs beat into us, right? Right. right? Usually by the people around us. Yeah. And we believe them over time, right? Like uh, it's weird. I don't know if you remember that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio called Inception. Ah, yep. Great movie, right? Yeah. Like I love this movie. You guys should go see it if you haven't seen it. But uh, Inception is this idea that Leonardo is planning these dreams into people deep, 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 you know, into their brain so they'll act in a certain way. And that's kind of how I think of a core belief. It's something buried multiple levels deep that causes us to behave and act in a certain way. And all kinds of men have all kinds of beliefs that are buried there that they're conscious of and maybe unconscious of that we act on uh, almost, you know, um, impulsively. Yeah. Right? right? Like who can't, who doesn't remember uh, a young man being told when we were kids, like, stop crying, stop being a baby. How many of us were told that? Or like, man up, grow up. You know, those are, and those seed these beliefs Right. That look, you know, to be a man, we don't cry uh, to be a man. We kind of just muster up the energy, yeah. 
you know, uh, don't throw like a girl has been the one that everybody's talking about <laughs> today. Like, don't throw like a girl. Like, that's a bad belief, not only about men, but about women too, right? right. And we have these like beliefs that are very controversial today that we can't even have anymore because they're so controversial and polarizing yeah. and demeaning to other people, right? So we, we do have bad beliefs. Um, can, can you think of a, like a bad belief that you've had in your life mm. that was like revolutionary for you to discover that you had? Yeah. Yeah. That might um, be hard on the spot. Yeah, no, it's, right? it's good. And it's really good to go there. Cause I, I think it's something when you've had a belief like that deep inside, it's something that you have to keep just w- wrestling with God, wrestling with the Holy spirit to, um, to keep centering on his truth. Um, yeah. in that space. Yeah, you got to so, keep beating on this thing yeah, because it keeps beating yeah. on you. Right? Yeah. So for me, it's that performance, uh, performance leads to affirmation or performance leads mm-hmm. to love. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I, I think it was, you know, probably as I was transitioning from high school to college and, you know, going through really becoming a man, uh, becoming on my own, self-sufficient, all these kind of mm-hmm. things. I started to, to recognize just in different places that, man, I'm, I'm so performance driven. And, uh, when I fail, I feel so inadequate when I mm-hmm. succeed, I feel so, you know, the highs and highs and lows of that. Um, but to be, to have that replaced with God speaking, no, oh, you're, you're my beloved son. You could sit in that chair right there, do nothing, and I love you. I will affirm you. That God's, God's, uh, I'm trying to remember the verse, um, dancing, uh, dancing over us with affections, singing over us mm. with affections, um, and that I can, I can be completely still and at peace without any activity or performance, and God's love and affirmation mm. is still going to rest on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it would really hurt for you to like hear, man, you sucked at doing this podcast today. (laughs) 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 You go home and you cry. I mean, but, but that would really affect you, right? What was, uh, and, and you don't suck at this podcast, by the way, you're doing great, (laughs) man. You're doing awesome. (sighs) Accolades. You can kind of let down. But I, I think that it's weird though. Those little voices deep inside of us that are in, incepted like Leonardo DiCaprio did, they're seated deep inside of us. They, they lead to all these interesting behaviors. Like, like I wasn't good enough or I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not effective or I'm not making a difference. And, and it kind of, we almost, it's almost like we hear these voices in our head, right? Like you suck. You sucked at that. Why did you say that you stupid idiot? You know what I mean? It's weird, but I've heard those voices too. Yeah. Now, we're not talking about real, real voices, right? <laughs> right? We're not weird here, okay? So we're not talking about re- real voices. We're talking about the voices in our head that are real to us, right? That, that we hear that's bad self-talk. You know, I heard somebody recently uh, from Moody College in Chicago, uh, who is a professor there, said that it wasn't until his 50s, and he doesn't believe until most men are in their 50s, that they start to deal with some of this bad self-talk. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Like, until we're in our 50s, we start to deal with this bad self-talk. That we, these, these voices that we've heard, and we're talking about core beliefs, right? These voices yeah. that we've heard over time are seated so deeply in us that there are these powerful shouting mantras that just that that call us to behave and act in certain ways. In your case, performance, right? Yeah. Was success or failure to you? Yeah. Uh, today, do you still deal with that? Some. Oh yeah, absolutely. Still, but how do you deal with it? That's differently today. Yes. What do you do that's different? Yep. Um, for me, everything comes back to identity. I, I'm just a. I, I get obsessive compulsive when it comes to <laughs> just just being able to approach you're not that identity. obsessive compulsive no, Come I'm not, on. Yeah, no. yeah, it's, a, it's an inside joke right, 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 with, right, with uh, right, right, my right. wife and I now yeah. but, um, uh, I think a hyper focus on identity um, versus behavior activity all these types of things is has been my way to approach it differently than I have in the past and so whether it's uh, whether it's Devo times whether it's journals whether it's conversations even right now in the season of life I'm in for the past maybe three three to five weeks or something, uh, Holy Spirit's just been highlighting identity, identity, identity. And so for me, that's something I try, you know, every morning I wake up, I got a little reminder set on my phone, 845, that kind of reminds me of this mission statement. I am Tyler. I'm a beloved son of God. I am a mighty man of valor and God has equipped me to do his good work. So just some different things that I repeat that to myself. Good. I'm going to, I'm going to show you something. So this is a real thing. I didn't manufacture this, but I went to this camp and I spoke at it this year. 
uh, in upstate New York, and uh, they gave out these man cards <laughs> yes. here. Yeah, you like that man card. That's awesome. I got a man card, there finally. Go. There you go. 47, got my man card, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, they said by the end of the... I was the keynote speaker at it. I didn't come yeah. up with this idea. I did think it was in interesting, and I was like, what is he going to do with this man card by the end of this <laughs> retreat? So anyway, this, this man card was given out. You're supposed to write your name on the front of it, so I wrote my name on the front of it. On the back, they said write out your commitment, your mm. kind of what you're committing to in your manhood. So I wrote this, mm. you know, like this. So this is me sharing kind of vulnerably here. So, and it's not going to make a lot of sense to you, but I'll make sense of it. It says, don't quit. Don't let emotions convince you it's not worth it. Uh. You see what I did there? It's, it's kind of this, this confession that, you know, we, we each have this desire to let circumstances define who we are. Yeah. And it begins this voice of like, maybe I should just give up. Maybe I should quit. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't continue. Right. And it's a very subtle voice. It's not powerful enough to say quit, but it's, it's a voice you kind of hear like, ah, it's not worth it. Men aren't listening to you. Men aren't, men aren't using the stuff that you're using. Uh, uh, you're not articulate enough. You're, you're not, you're not big enough. You don't have enough credibility in the space yet. And it's just this, this voice, these voices that you hear that say, kind of give up give up give up but mm. what you did then to counteract that is you wrote something out that you're praying every day yeah say it again it's yeah. i am tyler i'm a beloved son of god beloved son of god i'm a mighty man of valor i love it yeah. i'm a mighty man of valor i love it and i think that is very powerful because jesus hears that same voice yeah right yeah <laughs> jesus hears his voice and it's awesome right after baptism yeah. right this is my son in whom i am well pleased and what son doesn't want to hear that voice? Yeah. What son of God doesn't want to hear that voice? You want to hear that voice? I want to hear that voice. And that's kind of the voice of like, this is the belief that trumps all other beliefs and all other voices yeah. that we hear in our life, right? Yeah. But we've got to dig out all these other bad ones first before we can really hear this <laughs> other voice, right? right. So like, how, how do you think guys... What, what advice would you give guys now that you're kind of on the other side of this thing? You're trying, you've got this little, this little phrase that you repeat to yourself. And by the way, that isn't positive self-talk. Hmm. That isn't positive. I believe that that's actually believing what God says. Yeah. There's a complete difference between positive self, Zig Ziglar, uh, Tony Robbins talk, yep. and then what God says. There's yeah. a complete difference. There's a cavernous difference there hmm. because God's truth is truth all the time because it works every time. I always say that and I think it's always true. But but how how uh, how how do you do that, Tyler? Yeah. What, what does it look like to do that? Um, I think brotherhood is a is a big piece of that component there when uh, when you're able to be vulnerable, speak out, these are the voices that I hear. These are the this is the voice that I I want to hear, God's mm -hmm. voice. Um, and to even and I think there's times a lot where we might wrestle with that. We're trying to figure out you know, just emotionally, what is this voice? Like there's something, I can tell that something's not sitting right with it. And so it's something I got to kind of split apart and dissect a little bit. And I think, I think brotherhood helps a lot in that. Uh, when you bring godly men to the table with you to help process that. So mm -hmm. yeah, for me, uh, I, journaling is a big activity for me. Right. I'm a big thinker. So just yeah. getting things on paper that I can right. come back to a day later and be like, Oh yeah, that's, it's kind of where I left off in dissecting that yesterday. It's kind yeah. of like high school when you're dissecting the frog, you put yeah. it on ice and yeah, come yeah, back yeah, to yeah. it later. <laughs> nice, nice analogy. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and I want to really draw attention to something tangible you did. You wrote out something that you put in stone before God. And I think that that is awesome. In fact, the text from today is from Exodus chapter 20. And you're going to find this interesting. It says this, and God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or on earth beneath or is in the water under the earth. Now, I find that to be very, very interesting because what God is coming against in this text is idolatry, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, making idols, making something carved. Now, you know, I think for most of us today, we kind of go, yeah, I don't make carved images. You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't wake up this morning and, and like carve an image of myself out of wood and sit it on the counter and go, I want to be like this. You know what I mean? Whittling, like, whittling yeah. away. <laughs> Whittle, whittling away an image that I'm going to worship, right? And I, But I think it's interesting what man always goes to. In their day, that's the way that they idolize things. Yeah. In our day, 
I think one of the ways we idolize things is we idolize these beliefs mm -hmm. that we hold very subtly that are buried deep within our heart. And I think in our world today, that's where idols begin. We have these idols that yeah. I am not good enough. I don't perform well enough. I am not loved, right? I can't do it. Hmm. I can't do it. And I'm not talking about bad self-talk again. I am actually talking about beliefs that don't align themselves with God's word that become idolatry, Exodus 20, to us. And that's what we're fighting here. Hmm. You chose to write in stone mm -hmm. another commandment, hmm. right? Yeah. I am the Lord your God, right? Yeah. You are my son in who I am well pleased. And you wrote that down and you put a, not a line in the sand, you put some words in concrete and then you repeat them to yourself uh, to remind yourself of who you are in relationship to God and his identity. And that, that way you hold his identity and his beliefs over your own. Yeah. And oh man, that comes against anything yeah. in our life. And I love what you did there, man. That is a great example for any guy out there. I don't know if you believe that or not, but I, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the things you do? Uh, oh, you know, I just uh, suck all the time. <laughs> That's basically what I do. No, I, I would say specifically this. Yeah. How okay. do you identify? Because I think for me, I feel... I'll, I'll feel a tension in my life. And okay. I think that's when I know that there's a belief. What are some of the ways that you would dive into that where maybe you feel the tension, you feel some of the, the emotion or conflict of some of my behavior activity is stemming from a belief. How do you, how do you trace the, the thread? Yeah, that is a great question. I, you know, I, I think that you kind of have to unravel the things. I think you, everybody's got these hairballs of core beliefs. Mm. Right. And they are, <laughs> they are a hairball. I mean, <laughs> think about your, your cat coughing up, a <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Frogs, dissecting a frog, cat hairballs. This is the this. only time I'm ever going to talk about cats on this show. All right. <laughs> I promise you I'll never bring it up again unless it's a lion. Okay. So let's imagine a lion coughing up a hairball. All right. So, you know, this lion coughs up his hairball and you know, it's all tangled and gross and disgusting, you know, and you can't untangle the thing, you know, you can't pull it apart. You just pull it. It just gets tighter, right? That's what happens to a hairball. A uh, big ball of string that's wadded together that you can't, you pull on it and it Christmas just gets lights. tighter. Christmas lights that are all tangled. Thank you very much. I like that so, so much better. Thank you. Or, or a line when you're casting. Now we're getting masculine, there right? I casting my line out, big hairball. You just got to, you got to slowly kind of pull and tug on it, right? That's kind of the, the metaphor there. You got to pull yeah. and tug on it. And it it's one step at a time. It doesn't happen all at once. There isn't one fail. Poof, and whoa, we're all... Fun, fun and dandy and back to fly fishing. It's, it, it takes time. And I think that we've got to dig kind of deep into you know, where, where do these things come from? We've got to ask ourselves some questions. We've got to reflect on it. We've got to pose it to our spouses. We've got to pose it to our friends. And maybe we listen to sermons. Maybe we dig into God's word. And, um, you know, suddenly we will come to discover what that thing is that has really caused that thing to get all wound up in us. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, these core beliefs usually drive pretty deep. Yeah. Actually, and they're they're quite humbling. Um, they also often require us to get pretty vulnerable before we get, get there. And uh, uh, you know, like like even in my own life, I've encountered many core beliefs that have, when I have unraveled them, have not only unraveled my life but caused me to put it back together the right way. Mm. And that's the hope in it is we're we're looking to unravel things so that we can put them to bed together again in a way that honors God mm -hmm. because a, a fishing line all wound up is useless, mm -hmm. but a fishing line wound up around a spool is ready to use. And I think that that's what God wants from us is he wants to unravel those things so we can become useful and purposeful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what guys need. So whether it be going and sitting in front of a counselor, sitting in front of a friend, having a discussion, trying to dig deep on it, getting around some texts that relate to it, listening to some sermons that might help us with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll unravel these core beliefs and then we can realign our beliefs with God's beliefs. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do. Realignment, right? Right. right? right. Just like when I bang my truck into a curb, I got to go get it realigned. <laughs> <laughs> or rather my wife bangs the car into a curb. <laughs> I've right. got to go get it realigned. It's never me, man. I never hit the curb. <laughs> so anyway, so, but with that, I think that's where I think most men need to go is just taking those gradual steps. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, you know? And so neither was it for you, right? It wasn't for you. Yeah. 
neither is it for me. So guys, with that, uh, I think it would be really valid for you to jump into our relationship like Tyler and I got here. We got our books, right? Yes. We got a 30 Virtues That Build a Man, a conversational guide for mentoring any man. We just did this right here. If we can do it, you can do it. Uh, it can be as fun or as funny or as ridiculous as ours, but maybe it's meaningful <laughs> too, frogs, right? Or whatever, whatever you want. Uh, go dissect the frog today, right? <laughs> Discover what core beliefs are going on behind you. And we hope you'll do that at beresolute.org forward slash 30, T-H-I-R-T-Y. Go grab a book today. We know you'll love it. And we'll see you right back here next time for another edition of Man Talk.